Next we have Brandy Richards, who is the president of the Urban League Young Professional. <laughs> I am Brandy Richards, president of the National Urban League Young Professionals. We stand here in our nation's capital on the promises of our forefathers. Those that came before us were fiercely urgent in their actions and assured us that justice would come swiftly. Their tremendous sacrifice allows us to gather here today without fear. We listened to the wise counsel of our parents and grandparents when they said work twice as hard if you want to be equal. Always wondering in the back of our minds, is that really true equality? And then Sanford, Ferguson, New York and Cleveland showed us that laws in this nation have not been applied equally. In far too many cases, our nation's laws are ill-equipped to deliver equal justice to the black community. But hope is not lost. We are the now generation. And America must understand we are fighting for our right to live. So if you think the disruption in your evening commute from protesters lying in the street was challenging, you ain't seen nothing yet. We're just getting started. And like our brothers and sisters across the world, we will not ask for your permission. So I say to you, the now generation, Students of history know that the boycott in Montgomery, Alabama didn't just last two weeks. It lasted more than 380 days. So don't get weary. Do not lose interest in the cause even when they lose interest in us. With each fearless act to address race in this country, we beget many more. Believe the change you want to see in the world will and must come from you. We were born for this moment. As Dr. King, Whitney M. Young, Ella Baker, and dear brother Malcolm were born for theirs. The blood of all of our ancestors runs through our veins. And we will not apologize for seeking justice. Hashtag, we got now. Thank you. As a mother with a one-year-old son, I see life differently nowadays. I look into his eyes and wonder what type of future is he going to endure. This struggle is about all of us. So I decided to borrow the words of one of my 100 to watch young social justice warriors to describe how many are truly feeling. For those of us living while black in the United States, particularly those of us who are also queer, trans, women, working class, immigrant, and or houseless, the regularity with which we are met with dehumanization is obscene. When humanity becomes a luxury, exclusively accessible to those whose skin tones are closer to white, who benefit from and are valued through the direct brutalization of black, femme, gender non-conforming body, it becomes clear how deeply internalized anti-blackness, not racism, anti-blackness truly is. How do I survive in a country that was built through the labor, exploitation, and extermination of my ancestors that has always devalued my entire existence and is working overtime to actualize my death. Where is the manual on how to survive consistent direct violence toward my personhood? How do I survive when my body is under constant siege? What is the value of my life? What is the value of my body? What is my worth? Do I have any? Ain't I a human? Thank you, Danielle Stevens, 
for lending me your words and your truth. When I saw what happened in Ferguson, I thought about the New York City Stonewall riots of 1969, where community patrons, including trans women, lesbians, drag queens, and gay men, fought back against continued police harassment. Black and brown people were the leading activists that felt the need to stand up and fight back against police brutality. We are all tired of being sick and tired. Things must change. Black people, our lives do matter. Let's own our power. But we also need justice in our schools. And, and the next speaker has been fighting for justice in our schools for her entire career. And so we want to welcome our friend, our partner, and the head of the American Federation of Teachers, Ms. Wendy Wongong. We want to make sure they hear you in the Capitol as they're voting today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are we fighting for justice? Yes. Are we fighting for life? Yes. Are we fighting for justice? Yes. So together, and today, we gather Black, white, gay, lesbian, straight, people of all religions, people of all colors, people from all walks of life, speaking in one voice to demand more from our justice system. I know we're angry. Centuries of racism precede us. But together, we will bend the arc of justice. Together, we will make a profound impact in the culture of law enforcement. And if we do this, together we will bring police and community together. At times like this, it is not enough to speak out against injustice. We must act because an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This is not a Cleveland problem. This is not a Ferguson problem. This is not a New York City problem. This is an American problem. Which is why I publicly ask the question I am haunted by. Would Tamir Rice, would Mike Brown, would Eric Garner be dead if they were white? We all believe that answer. And that's why thousands around the country have protested and been arrested. And I was honored to join them and honored to join groups like Hands Up United, Freedom Side, Jay Fridge, Ferguson Action, Dream Defenders. Last Thursday night, I and many other Jewish colleagues sat and said Kaddish, the prayer for the dead, for Eric Garner. And because we did it on the street, we were arrested for it like thousands of others. Because as you know, and I know, power does not yield willingly, and an injustice for one is an injustice for all. We stand and march together because we want a criminal justice system that is colorblind. A criminal justice system where justice is not determined by the color of your skin. Our system is broken, but make no mistake, we can fix it if we choose to work together and if we choose to work and push law enforcement to work with us. Cops are not the enemy. Bias and racism is. Issues of excessive force and unequal justice can only be addressed when community police and elected officers work together. We need the police to keep our communities safe and vibrant, and communities need policing that is safe, community-focused, and just. This relationship can happen with proper training, with body cameras, and with a commitment by
by police to work with communities to keep all of us safe. My last point. We don't fix this if we also don't work on economic inequality, including good jobs, decent housing, high quality neighborhood public schools. That is how we get to a more just and equal society. So today, I ask you to also work with us so we have and fight for living wages, great public schools, the right, the right to join a union without intimidation, and the right to vote without intimidation. I come here today representing 1.6 million people, the teachers, our bus drivers, our nurses, they all stand together with all of us in this fight. Black Lives Matter, that's what we've been saying. All lives matter. Today, starting today, we can transform this system. We can make it a better legal and economic system and a better democracy. God bless you. March on, walk on, fight on. Told you she's bad. Next, we're gonna have from the Hip Hop Caucus, Brother Terrence Muhammad. Hip! My name is TC and I'm with the Hip Hop Caucus, bringing greetings from our president, CEO, Reverend Lennox Yearwood. And at the Hip Hop Caucus, we can't stop and we won't stop until we see justice, right? And we understand that the answer to injustice is justice for our, all our people, right? So we at the Hip Hop Caucus, we want to make sure that young people have the voice. We want to make sure that young people are organized and they are mobilized and to get young people across the country to do us right for Eric Garner, right? For Michael Brown, for Sean Bell, for all of those slain brothers that have died out here in the streets, right? So with hip hop, we want to make sure that young people are at the forefront. We want to make sure that those who are on the front are on the front lines of fighting for the justice of our people that we support them, right? We want to make sure that we speak to this government, we speak to this justice system that you need to do justice by our people, right? We are here in D.C. at a march, but there should be a march in every major city, every city in the United States, because there's injustice in America. So don't let us just be here today just to march for a moment, but we want to make sure that this is a movement, right? We want to make sure that we take this cry not only in America, but all across the world. Young people are sick and tired of being sick and tired and dying at the streets, and we're not going to take it anymore, right? We're going to put our hands up, but when you put our hands up this time, we're going to put our hands up to do something. This young generation is not scared. This young generation is not fear, they are fearless and they're not going to keep with this stuff that's going on. So we at the Hip Hop Caucus say we want to have demonstration, but we know demonstration without legislation leads to frustration, right? So we want to make sure that policies are in place. We don't want to want the police to police themselves. We want to make sure that the community takes control of our own community. We want to make sure that we do what's necessary. If the government doesn't do for us, we must do something for ourselves. And it's past time to all those that want to pacify the spirit of revolution. We are not going to sit down and take it anymore. We are going to take to the streets. We are going to mobilize, but we are also going to be organized. The young people are not just yelling and screaming. This is the natural reaction to injustice. People will cry out when there's no justice. That's why you say no justice what? No peace, right? No justice, no peace is the natural cry. So we want to make sure that you don't give for those that are making decisions, that you don't give a hypocritical solution to the problems of our people. And if you love your people, we will never get tired at the Hip Hop Caucus. Because we can't stop and won't stop. Because we love our people. And if you love your people, you will fight for your people and you will stand and you will march until justice comes down, right? So once again, I say hip, 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 and we 
don't stop, can't stop, won't stop.